Joining me from Toronto for more on Afghanistan's election is Kamran Bukhari. He is the director at the Center for Global Policy Think Tank. Welcome, Kamran. Well, first of all, let's talk about voter turnout. It was the lowest, as I mentioned, in many years. What does this say about voters' faith in the system? Well, it doesn't say much. Uh, I mean, yes, people don't show up to cast their ballot because they're afraid to, you know, be killed or maimed in an attack by the Taliban. But it's bigger than that. There, there's also the bigger question that, do people really have faith in the political system? Uh, you know, how much do they think that this political system will, uh, or process of, you know, presidential elections is going to lead to a better future? So 20% to me says, not a whole lot of people are putting their faith in the system. And that is, you know, speaks volumes about the bigger problem of negotiating with the Taliban. Yes, this goes to my, my second question. What does this low turnout say about the influence of the Taliban, who used violence, as again, uh, as they have in previous elections, to disrupt the vote? I mean, uh, clearly the Taliban uh, are exploiting the situation, but, you know, uh, an insurgent movement uh, exploits uh, an already bad situation. I mean, if you look at this government that uh, has been in office since the last elections. Uh, you know, it lost legitimacy very early on uh, when uh, the uh, the chief executive officer uh, of Afghanistan, Abdullah Abdullah, challenged the victory declared by President Ashraf Ghani, and it took the Secretary of State John Kerry to cobble up a like an on-the-spot, last-minute deal to get a government going, in the hope that they would change the constitution and create a position of prime minister. That never happened, and that, you know, temporary Band-Aid deal was only meant for two years, and those two years came and, uh, you know, they, they left. And so after that, you know, you, you think that that arrangement was no longer legitimate. So if you're going into this election with an, a, a pretty illegitimate situation, then how do you go ahead and then move forward? Right. So the, the government wants to negotiate with the Taliban, but the Taliban refused. So can you can you see the election changing that stance at all? No, I think that the if anything, this points to the weakness of the Afghan state. That unfortunately, the United States has spent, uh, you know, and the international community uh, close to a trillion dollars in the last 18 years trying to construct a a, a democratic, uh, you know, structure in which you know, various Afghan groups can come to terms with one another. You know, if you just sort of set aside the Taliban who oppose this political system, even those who participated, the various factions, uh, they haven't really learned how to, you know, agree to disagree. So if the mainstream is incoherent, how can you bring in a movement from the outside uh, that actually opposes the system uh, to begin with? And this is an argument I made last fall, when the United States started to negotiate with the Taliban, saying these talks are pointless because you don't have a mainstream in which to absorb the Taliban. All right. Cameron Bakari with the Center for Global Policy, thank you so much for your insight.